Let's talk about the relationship between the Federal Reserve and other banks and some of the regulatory requirements or regulatory functions. The Fed also has regulatory responsibility over other banks. It's the second major responsibility of the Fed. Uh, this, the Federal Reserve System uh, manages all of the relationships and the regulations that manage the banking system across the U.S. economy. Um, the Fed establishes and enforcing various kinds of banking rules that affect monetary policy and the overall level of competition between the banks. They also manage processes like, for example, check clearing, where the overnight process where if you deposit a bank in your account, it goes to the, to the banks and takes money out of the bank that wrote the check and puts the money in the accounts of the bank that, uh, that uh, is deposited the check. Um, almost all checks are handled in that way, and that way you can process from one city to another all over the country. Um, it also manages depository insurance, which is this uh, federal deposit insurance company, the corporation that manages this, um, this operation of making sure that people that have deposits in a bank are insured that they can get their money out if they need to do that. So two main types of banks to know about in um, in this in the context of traditional banking relationships where loans and all that are made. Um, there's one thing in common there. Business objective is to earn money by managing, safeguarding, and lending money to others. Uh, the difference is whether they're businesses or consumers. Uh, the sales revenues come from the fees and interest that they charge for providing these financial service. The largest and the oldest of the financial institutions are commercial banks, which perform a wide variety of financial services. They rely mainly on checking and savings accounts as their source of funds, and they use only a portion of these deposits to make loans to businesses and individuals. Savings and loans, on the other hand, SNLs, often called thrifts, are financial institutions that primarily offer savings accounts and make long-term loans for residential mortgages. A mortgage is a loan made so that a business or individual can purchase real estate, typically a home. The real estate itself is pledged as a guarantee called collateral uh, that the buyer will pay back in the mo uh, in the uh, will the, the the guarantee that the buyer will pay back the loan. That's the mortgage agreement. If the loan is not repaid, the saving savings and loan has the right to repossess or to take back to take ownership of that property. As an example, uh, J P Morgan Chase is the second largest commercial bank in the United States behind. Bank of America. As an example of some other kinds of institutions, we have credit unions. These are financial institutions that are actually owned and controlled by the, its depositors. They usually have a common employer or a profession, uh, like they're a, a credit union for a particular industry, a particular large company, something like that, where people come together. Could be a trade group, could be a, re a religious uh, organization. Uh, because the credit union is tied to a common organization, the members, that is the depositors, are allowed to vote for directors and to share the credit union's profit in the form of higher interest rates on accounts and or lower loan rates. While credit unions were originally created to provide depositors with a short-term source of funds for low-interest consumer loans for items like cars, home appliances, vacations, college, that sort of thing, today they offer a wide variety of financial services. Mutual savings banks are similar to savings and loans, but they, like credit unions, they are owned by their depositors. Among the oldest financial institutions in the United States, they were originally established to provide a safe place for savings of particular groups of, fish, of people. For example, fishermen. Um, the, this is found, these are found mostly in New England, and a, a place where people could maintain and, sit and keep their, their funds and their assets in a, in a safe location or a safe uh, place, a mutual savings bank. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation 
is insurers individual bank accounts it was established in 1933 to help stop bank failures throughout the country during the Great Depression today the FDIC insures personal accounts up to a maximum of $250,000 this is at nearly 8,000 FDIC member institutions the National Credit Union Administration NCUA regulates and charters credit, credit unions and insures their deposits through its National Credit Union Insurance Fund. All of this has, has a lot to do with trying to manage the problem of bank failures. If you think about how awful a bank failure would be to an economic community when if there wasn't something like Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Um, large bank failures occurred uh, during the great the recent Great Recession according to the FTIC, FDIC 474 banks failed between January 2009 and March the 30 May the 31st of 2014 compare this with only 52 failures that occurred between 2000 and 2008 you can see the grasp, the impact, the size, uh, you can grasp the impact of the financial crisis um, of that particular long lasting recession. For the March of 2014 ending quarter, the FDIC reported that the number of problem banks had declined for 12 quarters straight. This reflects the improving economy than the healthier financial system. It's safe to say that most depositors go to sleep every night without worrying about the safety of their savings. All of those um, particular bank fail failings did not result in, uh, in customers who had less than $250,000 in their banks losing any of their funds. So that's how this system, this insurance system, regulation, how government regulation fits into this banking industry to help keep those kinds of crash type environments uh, or bankruptcies from having a broad economic effect across the entire economy. It's a stopgap for that process. The World Bank, which, we, which uh, was created in 1944 from people from around the world, raises money through donations, bond sales, and shareholder support. This money is used to provide loans <clears throat> and other financial assistance to developing countries. This uh, realizing that the funds of certain projects can negatively affect the environment, the World Bank adopted access to sustainability, uh, the policies that assess the, uh, the sustainability of proposed projects to try and make sure that, that the uh, broader impact to society is taken into account in some of these economic development decisions. Despite these policies, environmental groups have accused the World Bank of funding projects that harm the environment. One project, the Sardar, uh, Saravar Dam in India's river Narmada, was accused of causing environmental degradation. degradation. Yet advocates for the dam argue that it provides irrigation and drinking water to the uh, communities surrounding it, surrounding it. The World Bank's must juggle both the human and environmental impacts when determining which, which projects to fund. As the importance of sustainability grows, the World Bank has taken steps to curb climate change and support renewable energy initiatives. The bank has increased its, loan for renew, its loans for renewable energy projects to almost 23% of the energy loans of the World Bank. So the World Bank takes this idea of development and, and financial systems uh, to a global scale, uh, help uh, supporting projects in the developing world. Um, we'll continue this. This kind of ends the section on the, the main section on how the banking system works and different types of pieces in the Federal Reserve. We'll talk about some other financial institutions um, and then we'll broaden the scope again in the next few lectures.